Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video which today is going to address Flat Earthers' misunderstandings slash misrepresentations of how perspective works. This stems from Flat Earthers claiming one of the reasons that we observe objects disappearing from view bottom to top beyond the horizon is due to things like waves. Because objects appear smaller the further away they get, and thus they reduce in angular size, so they claim that a small 3-foot wave could therefore obscure a 250-foot high cruise ship in the distance if the wave's angular size is equal to or greater than that of the ship. We see that if there were an obstruction 30 feet away, near that second golf ball, or just 6 millimeters above the eye line, it would be enough to obscure the entire golf ball 130 feet away. Same thing here, now if I just stand up and I'm going to extend this to a further distance, given a 6 foot observer height with 1 arc minute of resolution, how big would a wave have to be uh, 0.25 miles away to obstruct a 250 foot tall cruise ship 20 miles away? So it's the same uh, relationship, 250 feet of cruise ship 20 miles away versus X amount of obstruction a quarter mile away and you would get uh, a wave of three feet. So a three foot wave just a quarter mile away that has encroached upon that purple line already because of the rapid ascent rate will obstruct the entire boat to uh, 20 miles away. Now this claim was put directly to me by Don't Sphere the Truth in their first video about me, and I tried to tackle this argument in my response to them. I argue that this only actually applies when the object crosses our line of sight, like how we can block the moon with our thumb because our thumb near our eye has a bigger angular size than the moon, but it only happens when we hold our thumb up in the air directly in line between our eye and the moon. And that whilst a three foot wave could obscure a ship if you were lying down at sea level, if you're standing up, say six feet above sea level, then your line of sight would be higher than the wave, and so the wave would not obscure the whole ship. In fact, amusingly, such a scenario would only really work on a globe rather than a flat earth, and I attempted to demonstrate this in my usual manner with some simple orthographic diagrams. However, Don't Sphere the Truth doesn't seem to like my diagrams. Which is odd, because many people find this kind of simplified diagram very helpful in being able to visualise and understand the topic at hand. It's kind of like the diagrams that today's sponsor Brilliant.org regularly uses, and it's why I love using Brilliant. In fact, my daily streak of using Brilliant has just passed one full year. They offer effective online learning that covers a wide range of topics across maths, science and computing. I've been working through their new classes on calculating probabilities, and they've even added new classes on how AI works. The diagrams they use are not only simple, but often interactive as well, so you can see how changing variables affects things. And this hands-on method of problem solving has been shown to be six times more effective than just watching lecture videos. Why not see if you'd enjoy Brilliant as much as I've been by taking a completely free 30-day trial by visiting brilliant.org forward slash Dave McKeegan, as well as receiving 20% off if you sign up to an annual subscription. Now, like I said, I've seen quite a few flat earthers try and push this claim that ships out at sea would be obscured by waves. I've seen people when presented with this kind of image that show similar sized ships beyond the horizon and we see less of the further ship and flat earthers say it's because the further ship has a smaller angular size so is being more obstructed by the wave. I had Don't Sphere the Truth try and put this out as a reason for bottom-up obstruction in his first video about me, and then brought back the same basic argument in his next response in regards to mirages causing bottom-up obstruction after I'd showed this photo of Blackpool Tower taken from 47 miles or 75 kilometres away on the summit of Great Orme, and the summit is more than 650 feet or 200 meters above sea level, with around 100 feet or 30 meters of the bottom of Blackpool completely obscured. And I highlighted that for that to be because of either mirages or waves on flat earth would require them to be at least 30 meters high if they were right next to the tower, and even higher as they got closer to the observer. 
Don't Fear the Truth unsurprisingly dismissed that argument, though, and claimed that it was due to perspective and compression angles as things get further away. Even Flat Earth Dave put out a 10-minute video addressing this topic just the other day and attempting to explain how a 3-foot wave can obscure the view of a cruise ship for a 6-foot observer. Well, he spends four minutes trying to explain it and then six minutes explaining why people should sign up to a subscription for his app. But he begins with a first-person view looking down a row of pencils on the floor and then tries putting it into a side diagram similar to what I use. So I'll cover the diagram first. This was an orthographic view. Nobody sees sideways, but this is what's going on. But this is how we really see. And again, here's an orthographic view again. So we got our boat right here, we got our guy right here, we got our wave. He's blocking the, the bottom of the boat, but he could kind of look over the wave a little bit. And if we put the ship out here, he can still see the whole ship down to the waterline. Farther out, he can still see it, he can still see it, he can still see it. Makes perfect sense. So now I move the wave way out here. Now, even though it's smaller, it's still three feet above the flat water. So. Here's our perspective grid. It gets this amount of information. Let's say this is one mile, right? One mile, that's a mile, that's a mile, that's a mile. Those miles are getting compressed more and more and more. If I zoom in, each one of these is a mile and it's getting compressed until they're literally on top of each other. Dave states at first that he's presenting a side view. Absolutely no problem with that. Where Dave goes monumentally wrong though is he scales the ship down to represent it moving away except that does not happen with a side view it should remain the same size and just move across the screen if you're going to scale down to represent much greater distances you have to scale everything down equally as though you're just zooming out Reducing the size of the ship whilst the observer stays the same height is no longer a side view, it's shifting towards being from the perspective of the observer, but that then gives us no clear indication of where the line of sight is going. I actually did a similar side view diagram for my first response to Don't Sphere the Truth to show how a three foot wave would at most obscure three foot of the ship when it's next to the ship. However, Don't Fear the Truth's response was to challenge me about what would happen if I moved the ship further away. Well, this is what would happen. At no point would the top of the wave go beyond the viewer's line of sight, viewing the rest of the ship. I suspect Flat Earthers are muddling up side view versus first person and thinking the objects should be shrinking in a side view diagram, which they shouldn't. And we know this because if you set up a demonstration of this and have a camera looking side on at the table, as you move the ship across the table, it stays the same size from the side view perspective. It only reduces in angular size from the first person perspective. Now, speaking of the first person perspective, let's take a look at Flat Earth Dave's first person view demonstration and see if you can spot the flaws in his argument. So here I have a bunch of pencils on the floor. They're going all the way across the room. You see them a little better as they go down. And you see the space between them is equal. But as they go down, the spaces get compressed, 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 compressed. Basically, from here to the bottom of the screen is about the same as all of the other 30 spaces, or however many there are, right? They're all getting compressed. Now, if I went, if I got another pencil and put it on top of, let's say, the fifth pencil from the end, it would block all of the other pencils. Did you catch them? He set up pencils on the floor, spaced equally apart, to basically show how the angular size of the gaps between them decreases with distance. This is the same as the compression angles that Don't Sphere the Truth uses trying to argue that because the ground in the distance is being more and more compressed, then somehow that makes objects above them disappear. However, as I showed in the previous video, if you place an object at the far end of a table and lower your vantage point down, the detail in the table decreases, but that's because our eye line is moving more towards being parallel with the particular surface. But for objects that are sitting on that, our angle to the side of them is actually becoming less parallel and more perpendicular. 
If you were to get in a helicopter and fly above the ship, then your view to the side of the ship would move towards this compression angle and thus out of sight, but not when viewed from ground level. So sure, the pencils near the camera will begin to obscure the pencils in the distance, but those are all equal pencils, meaning they're all the same height off the floor, and the nearest pencil will only obscure the further ones when the camera is moved to lower than them. Then Dave says if you put another pencil on top of the fifth pencil back, it would block the rest of them. Yeah, but that's the complete opposite of the point he's supposed to be demonstrating. This is meant to be showing how smaller objects in the foreground can obscure larger objects in the background, not how enlarging the obstacle in the foreground could make objects that are smaller than it in the background be obscured. Now, just before I present an accurate demonstration to debunk this idea, Dave has actually inadvertently already given us a great demonstration, because whilst pencils in the distance don't really represent a cruise ship, because the pencils in the distance are the same height as the pencils in the foreground, an accurate demonstration of this would need an observer that is above the obstacle, and the object in the background is also taller than the obstacle. Kind of like that cabinet Dave has in the background. The base of that is clearly taller than the pencils, so that would make a great representation of a cruise ship. And despite the camera moving lower and lower in perspective, the pencils are not obscuring it. But here is my setup to show the point. I have my camera set up just above the end of a table. This object is lower than the camera height, so this is going to represent the small wave. And this object is taller than the camera, so it's going to represent the ship. Now, I'll start with moving the boat back, and sure enough, its angular size reduces. Now, I'll put it right to the far end of the table. Now, I'm going to move the wave back. But it doesn't obscure the ship, because the observer is higher than it. If I repeat this, but with the camera now lower than the top of the obstacle, then it does obscure the ship up to a limit before its angular size becomes too small, which is what the flat earth argument states. But that only happens when the observer is physically lower than the obstacle. With an observer that is higher than the obstacle, it does not work. And this should be fairly obvious. Flat Earth Dave himself confirms that on a flat Earth, a six foot observer who is looking down to the ground is looking down six feet at any distance. Now we live on a flat Earth. A six foot man, six foot tall man looking down at the water is looking down six feet. If he looks down at the water here, he's looking down six feet. Out here, it's still six feet below his eyes. When a three foot wave is right in front of you, it blocks zero amount of the ship. Move the wave all the way to up against the ship and the most that it blocks would be three feet. So with a flat surface that the wave is moving along, there is no rational reason for the amount of obstruction to not just steadily increase from zero to three feet and no more, much less rise to more than 250 feet of obstruction and then drop back down to three feet. And we can stand on the top of cliffs and still watch ships go out of view bottom first. For a wave to obscure the top of a 250 foot tall ship in that scenario would need a wave at least 250 feet high. And that does not normally end well for the ship. I'm pretty sure the flat earth argument for sunsets is foreshortening, basically perspective. That as objects move away from us, if the object is above us, it drops towards the center line of our vision, and if the object is below us, then it rises to the center line. Well, the top of the ship would be above us, and the wave is below us. So for the wave to obscure the top of the ship means that the wave needs to cross over and above the center line of our vision, which would mean the top of the wave would need to be above our center line and therefore physically taller than us. It's much like if you've ever seen forced perspective photos, Anytime you want a small object closer to the camera to appear taller than a physically larger object in the background, the camera has to be lower than the top of the nearby object. A common example of this is the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and people regularly take photos where it looks like they're trying to hold it up or leaning against it. But those only work when the camera is lower than the person's head. So no, 
on a flat Earth, perspective would not allow small objects to obscure massive ships in the distance if the observer is taller than the obstacle. No matter how much flat Earthers ironically like to try and claim that we don't understand perspective. Makes more sense on a globe, though. If we're looking to the horizon, as a ship goes over the horizon, it is now dropping below our line of sight. If you then get a wave that appears, the wave is now above our line of sight, and so in a position to actually start blocking the top of the ship. So, as I highlighted in my initial response to Don't Fear the Truth, for the bottom 30 meters of the whole of Blackpool to be missing from this photo, given that the observer is 200 meters above sea level, means if the Earth is flat, then whatever that obstruction is needs to be at least 30 meters high. And that is only if it's right on the doorstep of Blackpool Tower. So that would be a 30 meter high mirage. It's not going to be a 30 meter high wave on Blackpool Beach because somebody might have noticed. And if it is a wave, then it would have to be out to sea, so its height would have to be substantially higher as it's now closer to the observer. The Earth Curve Calculator, which many flat earthers insist on using, that clearly states it doesn't account for atmospheric refraction, puts 47 meters of Blackpool Tower being obscured. Walter Bislin's Curve Calculator, on the other hand, which does add in refraction, predicts that even with just standard atmospheric refraction, about 25 meters of the tower would be obscured. Which amazingly is what I'd guesstimated was the missing amount in my first response video. Blackpool Tower is listed as 158 meters high from ground to tip, and that includes the building around the base. That building is almost one-fifth of the total height of Blackpool Tower, so approximately 28.7 meters high. And yet, from the observer's position in Great Orm, that building is not visible. So it looks like this photo, once again, is only working on a globe, and also leaving Flat Earthers needing to find a new explanation for bottom-up obstruction on Flat Earth, because perspective slash small objects nearby and mirages doesn't work if the observer is taller than them. And yet, we still see the same bottom-first obstruction when we're looking from high vantage points. So, that's going to be it for this video. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.